I just cloned this complete app with more than 1 million downloads in less than 20 minutes. And the craziest part is that I didn't even write a single line of code. So I'm going to show you how you can do this too. Step by step specifically for this video. And in the end you will have a fully working mobile app on your phone that you can use right away. And as a bonus I will show you how to deploy this app live to the app store. Now here's the plan. We are going to build the entire mobile app using an AI app builder and we will set up the database and the user authentication so that users can create accounts and sign into the app. Then we will test out the app on our phone and finally we will deploy it live to the app store. Just like one year ago building an app like this would have costed you more than $20,000 and taken a few months with hiring developers. But now you can do it yourself in less than 20 minutes with zero coding experience. So now let's get started. Alright, so this is where most beginners mess up. They rush into building without planning. And this results in building either a generic app or an over-engineered app that they never finish. That's why I built Braindumper. It turns your messy idea into a structured prompt that AI can actually build from. And everyone gets one free generation per month. Okay, we are building a mobile app, so I will just select that option. And for this video, we are going to use Rourke to build it. Rourke is a mobile AI app builder, which means that anyone can build apps with just a few prompts. So now we just need to brain dump our app idea. And remember, don't hold back when you're brain dumping your idea. Just write down everything you can think of that you want to be included in the app. Because Brain Dumper is going to take our app's context and figure out what our MVP should look like. And an MVP is basically the completely simplest version of your app that you need to have built before you can launch it. So now Brain Dumper is going to strip out any features that we don't need to build to make it easier to make the app for us and keep it more focused on the core features so that it actually is an app that can be built in less than a week. And this is what every founder who's ever made a successful SaaS before has mentioned to do. Start with one simple feature, build out your app with that one simple feature and then launch it. Then once your app is live, that is when you can start improving it slowly but surely with real user feedback. So as we can see here, I mentioned a total of six features in my brain dump, but brain dump has now limited it to three features max to keep the app simple. So here's what we got. The app name is Combuddy and the problem it solves, many people experience anxiety and panic attacks, but don't have easy tools to manage their symptoms. There's high demand for a simple app that gives immediate support and resources to help users cope with these episodes. And the solution is Combody is a mental health companion that gives quick access to calming techniques, educational resources, and the ability to contact help during a panic attack. By adding guided exercises and tracking tools, users can manage their anxiety better. Now you can change all of these details as you want, but I'm happy with what we have right now, so let's just continue down to the core features. So now the AI agent has picked the top three core features for the MVP of our app, which for me is guided breathing exercises. So simple timer based deep breathing techniques to help users calm their minds and bodies during stress. And the second feature is the panic button, an easy panic button that starts guided prompts to redirect the user's focus and calm them during a panic attack. And the third one is emergency contact functionality, so just a quick access to either call a friend or a family member or a local help center for immediate support. I think all the three features are perfect for our app's MVP, but if you're not satisfied, you can either remove them right here or you can just rewrite the ones you did not like. So now I'll just click on next and here's the summary of the app we're building, so just hit the generate plan and this takes less than 10 seconds. All right, it's done and here are the next steps. Number one, let's open Rourke. So here is where we're going to build the actual mobile app. Now just go back to Brain Number, and on step two, we need to copy the initial prompt for the app. So back in Rourke, let's just paste this in and this is what it looks like. Create a React Native app called Combody using Expo and this just makes sure that it uses the right technology to build out the mobile app. Then it's just a quick overview of the app idea. So the three core features we're building for context and then the action steps it should take now. And it says now we want to build the app one feature at a time. Let's start with the core feature, which is the most important screen, the home screen. The homepage will have all the features in one place for quick access. So now let's hit enter and let the AI build out the first part of the app. Oh, and by the way, I've written out this entire tutorial video as a step-by-step -step guide on my blog if you want to follow along at your own pace. Link is in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, so a few minutes later, the app is built and here's the home screen with the three buttons for all of the core features. So as we can see right now, the buttons don't work since we haven't built out each feature yet. 
Oh, but nice, the last feature is actually working so that we can call 911. That's a nice start for the feature, but we're going to improve this later in the video. So now let's just build out the first feature. Head back to Brain Bumper and then go to step 3 and copy the second prompt to build the breathing exercise screen. Now just paste this in Rourke and this will guide the AI to build the next screen for us. The core feature of the breathing exercise screen is a timer with breathing animations that the user then can follow to calm down by breathing together with the app. So I will just come back once the AI is done building this feature. Okay, so now the breathing exercise screen is built and I like it. It's very simple, just how a mobile app should be. But there's just a few tweaks that I want to make to improve this screen. So I will just prompt nice, now make the UI for the breathe in and breathe out circle animation more obvious and simple to understand when to breathe in, when to hold for a pause and when to breathe out. Keep it simple. Okay, so apparently it added color codes to make it easier to understand when you're supposed to breathe in, out or pause. And it also added bigger animations, helper text and just overall simplified the design. Okay, so the new animations actually make it easier to understand if you need to breathe in or out. So this is perfect. But now to fix the small UI problems, I will just take a screenshot of the phone and paste it directly into Rourke. Okay, this is great. Now just make sure there's no text overlapping and make sure that the UI for this page is actually perfect. The pause and relax text is overlapping as well as the follow the circle and breathe deeply text. Okay, that did not work for the text fix. So I will just prompt Rourke to remove the text, follow the circle and breathe deeply and fill your lungs slowly. Okay, so now it's done removing the text and this looks good. Now just go back over to Brain Number and copy the next prompt for the panic assistant screen. Then back in Rourke, just paste this in. This screen will guide you through relaxing prompts to calm down during a panic attack. So it's basically a relax zone to help you stop stressing. Now let's just wait for this page to be built and about two minutes later it's ready. Now we'll just open the panic button page and nice, okay this looks clean. But the animation for the text is way too fast and the transition between the texts is not smooth so we need to fix that. I'll just prompt Rourke to fix these. Make the animations between different prompts smoother and fix the text at the bottom. Take your time, there's no rush. Okay, so the transition is way smoother now, nice. But now I noticed on the homepage, there's this text added at the bottom, so let's just remove that. I will just take a screenshot of the text so that the AI understands what I'm talking about. And then I will just type, remove this text from the homepage, take a deep breath. Okay, perfect. Now the only thing left is to finalize the third screen. So we're going to upgrade the emergency button to also be able to call friends and family, not just 911. So I will prompt now for the emergency contact button. Right now it only calls 911, but I want users to be able to call a friend as well. So maybe we should have the option to call 911 or call a friend, which then opens the contacts list on your phone. Okay, now I'm actually really interested in seeing how this turned out. Nice, so it made an emergency contact page where we can call 911 like before and now we can also call a friend. When I click to call a friend, the pop-up says this feature doesn't work on web, but it should hopefully work on mobile, which we will test out very soon. But I'm not very happy with the UI right here, so I will just prompt nice, but make the X to exit the page be in the navbar to follow the consistent theme. Wow, okay, so now it's done and this page looks so good now. The only problem is that we have two ways to get back to the homepage, so I will just just prompt the AI to remove the X entirely and just keep the back arrow instead. All right, perfect. This looks good. Okay, so now the app is built. So now let's move on to step number three, which is to build out the backend so that users can sign up to the app. In the top right corner under integrations, click on enable on the backend field. This will now just set up all of the necessary files in the code base. This might take like five minutes. Now we have the backend set up. So now we just need to prompt the AI to set up Superbase. And Superbase is the best database for beginners to use since it's super easy to set up and navigate inside of. So let's just prompt this, install Superbase and create the authentication system. Now the AI is going to build the sign up and the sign in screens and connect the app to Superbase so we can save all of the users that sign up. Just wait for it to finish and this took about 4 minutes for me. Now we can see the next steps so we just need to go over to superbase.com and here we can create an account and an organization if you haven't already and then click on new project. Now just give the project a name, a password and then click on create new project. So now the data 
database is made for your app. On this page, just scroll down until you see this section, project URL and API key. Now back in Rourke, we now need to add the URL and the API key to our code base. And this is actually very easy. At step number two in the chat, it tells us what to name the Superbase URL. So just copy the name. Then in the top right corner under integrations, open the environment variables tab, click add variable and under where it says key, paste the name here. Nice. Now go back to Superbase and copy the project URL and then just paste this into Rourke. Now just save this and then let's copy the name for the API key as well. And then once again, open the integrations, environment variables, add variable and just paste in the name and then go back to Superbase and this time copy the API key. Then paste this into Rourke as well under the value field and then hit save. And now I will just reload the app in Rourke and now we can see that the AI has added the profile icon in the top right corner of our app. So this is the login screen and I will try to sign up for an account now and see if it works. Just enter the email and a password and then click on sign up. Okay so now we need to verify the email address so just go over to your email and in here you should have gotten an email from Superbase. So now just open the email and click the link to verify the email address. So now it should be verified so just close out of the tabs and back in Superbase if you now go to the authentication tab. Now in here we can see that my account was made with my email address and by the way if you scroll all the way to the right in this row you will then see the column last sign in at and if this field has a date added it means that the user has verified their account via email. If it's empty it means that the user has not verified their account yet. Perfect. Now just close out of the Superbase tab as well. So now let's try to sign into the account that we just made. I'll enter the email and the password and then nice. It works. Pretty crazy that we just added the database to save users, the sign up and the login screen with email verification from just one prompt. If we now go over to the settings page, here we can see the email that we are signed in with. Okay, so now is the moment we have been waiting for. Let's hop over to a phone to test if the app is actually working on mobile. So first in Rourke, we need to switch the test on your phone tab to Expo Go, and then just open the camera on your phone and then scan the QR code. This will now open your web browser on your phone with a link. So just click on open in Expo Go or install the Expo Go app. If you haven't already downloaded the Expo Go app, you need this to be able to run the app on your phone. So now once we've opened the app, it's going to bundle the app directly on your phone and amazing now we have the app that we just made on our pc on our phone so i will try to sign into the account that we just made on pc and that works too so since we were able to sign in that means that the backend is working live from our phone let me just try to sign out as well and yes okay nice this works too i'll just quickly sign back in and now let's try to use the features of the app so i'll just open the first page okay now i'll click on start okay this is exactly the same page as we built on the pc now for the panic assistant tab i will just click on start and nice this works as well and now for the final emergency contact screen this did not work previously on our pc but now we're on mobile so it should be working when i click call a friend it asks us for permission to open the phone catalog so it looks promising i'll just click on accept and just like that the phone catalog opens amazing now we can call anyone from our contacts list directly from this app and i will just click the call 911 to check it works and yeah okay it works but let's not try to call them. Now we have a working app, so finally let's deploy this app to the App Store. So back in Rourke, in the top right corner, there's this button called Publish. Click this and here we can choose between publishing the app live in Rourke with this link, publish to the App Store or publish to the Google Play Store for Android users. I'll copy the link for this app and open it in a new tab to see how this looks for others. Okay, so it shows the title of the app and the QR code to run the app live on your phone. You can now share this link with your friends to let them test the app that you just just made. If they're on Android, they need to download the Expo Go app first, but if they're on iOS, they can just download the Rourke app. And yes, Rourke also has a mobile app where you can build apps directly from your mobile device, just like I've done in this video. I usually build apps from my computer because it's easier for me, but if you're on the bus or traveling, it's nice to be able to build apps on your phone as well. Okay, so back in Rourke, I will choose the Publish to App Store option. Then if you click New Submission, you will then see four steps to publish the app to 
the App Store. And just a quick heads up, to publish a mobile app to the App Store, you need to pay for the $99 yearly subscription for an Apple developer account. And you will also need an Expo account, which luckily is free to get started. So just click on sign up for an Apple developer membership if you don't already have one. I'm sharing an account with my brother, so I will just enter his email and password, and then we need an Expo account token. And this token gives access to our Expo account so that the AI can go ahead and publish the app for us. So click on the Expo settings in the text at the bottom and sign up for an account here as well. Once you're signed in, you should land on the Access Tokens page. And here just click on Create Token and just name it your app's name and then click on Generate New Token. Perfect. Now copy the API key under the Value field and then just close the tab and paste the API key in the Expo Account Token field in Rourke and then click on Continue. Now on step 3 you can change the app's name. The app version should be 1.0.0 since it's the first version of this app and I will just leave the iOS bundle identifier as it is. Then click on start submission and this will take us to step number 4 where Rourke will submit our app to the App Store. This will take a few minutes to complete. Okay so now if you go over to expo.dev you will see the app is added and is now being submitted to the App Store. Well done! And if you want to see me clone another mobile app where the founder sold the app for more than 1 million dollars, check out this video right here. Thank you for watching and as always, happy building!